What's up guys, how you doing? This is Philip Starr again and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about Google Guava preconditions and I'm going to be taking this class that I've put together, so a nice car and a, with a turbo engine and I'm going to be putting preconditions throughout them classes to make sure that they're well designed and that they're going to throw any errors or throw exceptions if the methods are invoked or the constructors invoked with a certain illegal state or maybe an illegal argument passed in. So why would we want to use preconditions or what is a precondition? Well a precondition basically ensures that the caller of a public method, so that might be this method, or a constructor here, is called and it meets and obeys the requirements of the method's specification. So maybe a method specification would be that the car always gets passed in an engine and the engine is not null. Maybe a precondition is that you can only accelerate until uh, a certain speed. You maybe you can't ex uh, accelerate past 70 miles per hour. Well, that's a, a typical precondition. And a precondition is a type of conditional failure. And a conditional failure is a code that throws an exception when a Boolean condition holds. So you may have a, a conditional failure um, with like some test assertions, so you want to throw them in test cases only where you want to ensure that a test has obeyed certain requirements or you want to have a verification check where you want to make sure that uh, an API you consume or a mock meets its specification and is doing what you intend it to do. So there's all these different kinds of conditional failures, but in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can use pre preconditions and using Google's Guava's library preconditions through your code base. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and show you. So the first thing you want to do is open up your palm file or maybe your uh, whatever dependency management tool you're using. And you want to bring in Google Guava. So I'm bringing in version 23.0, which is the latest version as of today. So once you bring that in, make sure you do Maven update, bring that down, and let's go. So first thing we have here, let's have a wee look at the classes. We have a turbo engine and implements an engine. Okay, that's very simple. And we have a car that accepts a turbo engine. And we have a status here that says is turned on, is false. So it's not turned on. And then you can turn the car on to true. So this is a very, very minimalistic API that I've just created to represent basically a car. It's not even a car, just a car with very, very minimum functionality. But let's go ahead and actually introduce some uh, preconditions to this. So when we have this engine, we want to make sure that the engine is uh, not, uh, make sure it's not null. That's the first requirement we have. So what we can do is say precondition, and then we'll use pre oh, preconditions dot check not null, and then we're going to use that. So this is quite similar to the Java 8 uh, check not null, only it's uh, objects require not null only we're using the preconditions. And we always want to use the static import when we're using preconditions. Um, it's uh, much more readable and maintainable in the long run. So go ahead and make sure you've imported that statically and remove that. And now we have our first precondition. And we're ensuring that when the engine's passed into the car, it is not null. So if we go run this, this will run fine. And then I'll run it a second time and we'll get an exception. So if I pass a null on the second time, and I run that as a Java application, you'll see we got a null pointer exception, which is what we expect. But now it doesn't really give us much detail on that. So what we can do is go ahead and actually pass in a string argument. So we can say engine must not be null. Save that, and what we can do is rerun the application and says engine must not be null. Now you can use string formatting here, but don't worry, it's not actually evaluated unless the exception is going to be thrown. But what you may worry about is this is always going to be constructed on each uh, time the method's called, even if it's not going to be thrown. So if you're writing really high performance code, maybe not the best idea. Maybe you want to extract this out into some kind of constant and pass it in that way. So that's the first precondition we have. Very good. That's cool. Next one we have is turn on. Well, we want to make sure that the cars are re not already on when we turn it on. So what we want to do is go up here and we're going to actually import another one. And the one we want to import is 
uh, let's say check state. So we want to be able to check the state of the car. So sorry, my typing is off today. So we're going to say check state, and we're going to say the car. Make sure the car is not turned on. And then we're going to say car is already on, and we'll see about that. So this is problem. Cannot be resolved. Oh, on turned on. Is turned on. See if that. So now we have another precondition that says when we call turn on, we need to make sure that the car is not turned on. And if it if it is on, we're going to throw an exception. So if we go back here, and remove this, we're going to play this. It won't throw an exception because it's fine. But if we call this twice in a row, so turn on and then it's on, turn on again, then it's going to throw an exception. Car is already on. So if you go into the check state, you'll see that basically what it does is it takes the expression, so whatever we pass in, so we're saying is turned on is false. So if is turned on is false is not true, then we're going to throw the exception. So you can write these nice conditions. So there's a difference between check state and check argument, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Check state actually checks the state of the current object, and it's not dependent on method arguments. So as you know here, there's no arguments coming in. So that's why I've used check state, and that's why it throws an illegal state exception, as the car is in an illegal state. Now, the next one and the final one, which I'm going to introduce in this tutorial, is a... Uh, method called check argument. So if we go into accelerate to, this is going to delegate to the engine. And in our instance, we're passing in a turbo engine and we have a maximum speed of 70 miles an hour. Well, of course we, we don't want to run at 70 miles an hour. So, or over 70 miles an hour. So we're going to have a precondition for that. And what we're going to do is bring in the static import. This time we're going to bring in uh, check argument and what we're going to do is bring in a check argument that this the miles per hour that we're accelerating to is always less than or equal to the maximum speed and if it's over that then we're going to throw a maximum speed error so let's go ahead and run this and this will throw an exception straight away so maximum speed is 70 if we reduce that to 70 and we go and run that and play that then we get no exceptions so this is how you can introduce preconditions into your application code base to really enhance the, the validation and the status of your, of your object and what state and what arguments are being passed between them. Now, there's a, there's a few more different ones. There's a check element index, there's check position index and check position indexes that you can use additionally. Now let's think of any uh, limitations uh, on uh, preconditions or performance issues. So as I said before, this uh, message is always constructed, um, even if we're not going to throw the exception. Um, so there's that as well. So and, and you don't need to worry about the formatting of that because it's only going to be formatted um, actually once you once the exception is going to be thrown and. Uh, Guys, I really hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial. I hope you try it out, use it in your code base if you found it useful. And I will see you in the next episode. So thank you very much and have a good day.